We have already examined the importance of self-development and the understanding of self in becoming a more effective leader through the development of a personal development plan. Leadership development requires the integration of this element along with ongoing developmental experiences in an organisational context. The reality of senior leadership roles is that they are extremely complex. The leader is simultaneously dealing with the organisational context, their followers, and interactions between followers and collectives such as the organisation, the board, and other stakeholder groups. Day and Harrison propose that two areas of development are required to deal with these various levels of leadership. The first development occurs at the individual level, with a leader's personal development focusing upon developing human capital, or the self. The second area focuses upon leadership development, or the development of social capital, focusing upon the leader's ability to develop and sustain a wide array of relationships up to and beyond the organisational level. In line with Day's second element of focusing upon social capital, Macaulay holds that there are three major components to its successful development. Firstly, the right kinds of development experiences at the right time with appropriate opportunities to learn skills required to progress within the field. Secondly, the ability to learn these skills, which is dependent upon a mix of a leader's personal orientation to learning, their motivation to learn, and the development of learning skills. And finally, organisational support for development, including coaching, mentoring and sponsoring and learning, review and feedback mechanisms, structured support for development programs, and opportunities provided for practice. Day distinguished this kind of development from management training insofar as leader developmental processes focus upon the relational or social aspects of the role rather than its technical aspects. Developmental processes in this regard are focused upon establishing meaningful networks inside and outside the organisation, being able to represent the team at intra and extra firm level, as well as opportunities to participate in organisational strategy. London and Mora also note that these processes cannot be one-off or haphazard. They need to be a continuous and meaningfully planned progression of activities that build upon one another such that even the progression in terms of projects or job assignments should primarily be considered from a developmental perspective, and not just the specific activities and opportunities for feedback, formal and experiential learning contained within them. One thing that is clear from Day and London and Maurer is that aspiring leaders need to ensure that they identify and work for employers who have a commitment to leadership development as well as structured mechanisms for providing relevant experiences and the ability to deliver appropriate feedback and reflection upon them. Organisations provide the critical link between technical competence and leadership competence by providing insights into the specific context of leadership not only within their organisation, but also within their sector. Firstly, senior leaders within organisations can provide aspiring leaders with privileged and critical insights into business stewardship, that is to say, how to understand and manage the complex interactions of all of the elements that make up a large organisation. Secondly, they provide learning with regard to how strategy is developed in relation to organisational strengths and weaknesses relevant to its environment how environmental scans are conducted, and from this, how to recognise opportunities and threats. Thirdly, senior organisational leadership is a valuable source of other privileged strategic information, insights and wisdom required to lead effectively at senior levels. Things such as how to lead during different parts of the economic cycle, or how to work with external stakeholder groups such as unions, shareholders, government and media, and even how to manage work-life balance while occupying senior leadership roles. These are all critical insights that cannot be had from academic learning or critical self-reflection. Finally, senior leaders within the firm can facilitate access to and entry of critical networks of industry peers, suppliers, buyers, thinkers, financiers and regulators, to name a few. All of these contacts and the ability to build and maintain positive relationships with them are necessary to lead an organisation effectively. To become an effective senior leader within a given field requires not only the development of self, but opportunities to develop critical contextual leadership experiences. An effective leader is not only one who is a continuous learner, but someone who has a critical eye towards what experiences they are required to master and who will help them best to master them.